In this week's video, I'll be going through the step-by-step -step process to draw meditative mandalas I developed for teaching. I worked in the field of adult education for many years, and in my career as an artist, I was able to work on some really interesting things, including teaching meditative arts for wellness, and in particular, this workshop I'm about to share with you. I was grateful to be hired by different organizations for Mental Health Awareness Week to teach this class, as well as at other events and in my private classes. The Making Mandalas workshop was my favorite class that I developed because there are no special skills needed, very little supplies are used, and this form of drawing can be learned at any age. My proper workshop description is, Learn the art of making beautiful mandalas as a unique form of meditation to reduce stress and anxiety and build a deeper connection with your creative soul. I'd suggest to maybe watch the video once first to understand the general process and then perhaps play it again and pause it whenever needed as you create your own mandala. I created this channel during the pandemic with the thought that my creative ideas are meant to be shared with as many people as possible, because I truly believe dabbling in the arts is one of the best mental health activities around. The mystical and magical story additions and themes to many of my vlogs are just because that's what I'm all about. Please do click like and subscribe, and as always, I'd really love it if you'd share my vlog on social media and with your friends and family. That would really help me build this channel with new subscribers, and I'll be able to create more weekly videos like this. Just a side note, as you see in the videos, I have also drawn mandalas on pressed leaves and even rocks. Once you practice a little bit, why not try out some other surfaces too? The more you practice, the better you will get, and there really are no limits to this. Have fun with it. The only rule I really have when I teach students is to not worry about being perfect. Okay, here's the tutorial. Let's first start with the supplies list, which is quite minimal. I'll put it in the vlog details as well. You need paper. I love using good quality papers and I try different papers out, but in this online tutorial, I am just using sheets of drawing paper out of a sketchbook. I usually like to have at least two sheets layered, so it feels a bit cushiony. You also need gel pens. So you can really just use any pen or pencil, colored pencils, or markers to create mandalas, but I really like to use colorful gel pens. The pens I'm using are mostly Sakura brand gel pens that I get at my local art store, Wallex, in Ottawa. I've had students tell me they've been really lucky at Costco and even Walmart on deals of 100 gel pens in a pack. You can really almost get them anywhere these days. I also like the Gold Sanford Uniball Gel Impact pen I bought from a local office supply store. So I'll be looking for silver and other pens they offer too. You need a pencil and a good old-fashioned protractor. You need a ruler. I'm using metric because I'm Canadian, but if your ruler only has inches on it, that's fine too. As a designer who trained in fashion design and multimedia design, I learned both actually, so I always swap back and forth. We're not really going to do much measuring at all though, anyways. So that's it for supplies. That's all you need to get started. I've cut my paper into a square about 17 centimeters by 17 centimeters. If you're using inches, maybe cut it to about seven or eight inches. You need to find the center of your paper by using your ruler from one corner to the diagonal corner and softly mark a line with your pencil and then moving your ruler to the other corners and softly mark another line. You can then mark your center with your pencil and then erase any of the extra pencil marks. The small circle that you've made will now be the point from where we will use the protractor to make our circles for the mandala.
The next step is to stretch your protractor open to measure a one centimeter measurement. If you're using inches, I'd suggest to make your measurement half an inch. Your mandala will end up a little larger than the one I'm doing, but that's okay. Using the center circle on your page, draw a circle with your protractor. Now stretch your protractor to two centimeters, or one inch, by measuring it on your ruler, and then draw another circle on your page by using that center dot again. Now widen your protractor another centimeter, or half inch, and make another circle. We're going to make five circles in total for this tutorial, but you can certainly make yours bigger in the future. There are no limits. Grab one of your gel pens. I'd suggest to maybe work with four or five colors to begin with. We'll first work with the first circle we made. You want to think of that circle as a pie that you are going to slice into four slices. You can put away your ruler now. We won't be using it anymore. For the mandala, we're not going to measure it all. We're going to be eyeballing everything from now on. So mark a dot at the top of the circle and mark a dot at the bottom of the circle. Turn your paper around, so now you want to mark another dot at the top of your circle and another dot at the bottom. Now you can work towards your body and drag down the lines from the top to the bottom always. Turn your paper and draw a line again from the top to bottom, always drawing towards the center of your body. Now we want to divide the pie into eight slices. Take a look at the curve between each of those slices and guesstimate the center of that slice. Mark a dot at the top and then at the bottom. Then turn your page. Guesstimate the middle of that curve at the top and the bottom of the slice and mark them with dots. Now you can draw the line from the top to bottom towards the center of your body turn and do the same thing again. When you're working with these mandalas, instead of thinking about pie slices, you can think of your circles as a compass and think of the directions north, south, east and west. Your body will always be the south direction and the top of the page is always north you will always be drawing from north to south. In other words, you'll always draw from top to bottom. Now we're going to draw a half of a leaf on each line. Keep turning your page while you draw half a leaf. If you are a yoga enthusiast or are knowledgeable about your chakras, think of it as always drawing energy towards your solar plexus chakra. I developed this drawing method because I find it easiest to draw the same way for the whole mandala, always pulling lines towards your body. But it's also pretty amazing, in my mind, to think that you are literally drawing creative energy into your core. Once you practice drawing mandalas and it becomes easier for you, you can really develop this repetitive drawing practice into more of a calming meditation. 
It does take some time, but it's so worth it. Then we're going to draw the other half of each leaf. Continue drawing from the top towards your body for each leaf. It doesn't really matter if they're perfect. You won't even notice any of the mistakes later on, believe me. Now use a different color gel pen and color the leaves in, leaving the center line to show. I am using a gold uni-ball pen I picked up from the office supply store to fill in the rest of the circle, but you can use any pen you'd like. Now we'll work with our second circle the same way we worked with the first. You can use the lines from your first circle as your guide to mark four points on the second circle, your north, south, east, and west. Use the same process that we used in the first circle to slice your second circle into eight sections. Again, don't worry about being perfect. You'll see I am further dividing each slice. Now eyeball or guesstimate half of the lines you made and mark each of them with a dot. Now you can draw in new half leaves from the first circle to the center dots you just marked. You might notice that I am drawing away from my body a couple of times here. As I get into a flow, I sometimes don't think about which way I am drawing, and I do what feels natural to me. That's okay, but do keep turning your page so the top is always at north. 
You can color in these leaves using two different colors if you'd like, or use the same color. It's really up to you. Later on, we'll be drawing over them. You can now draw in lines that are parallel to your leaves. Watch how I do it, and remember, you don't have to be perfect. I generally try and keep the same number of lines in each section, but it's not really noticeable when they aren't even. Now with a different color, you can draw right on your pencil line. I do it section by section. As your mandala gets bigger, you'll notice that your hand might be getting in the way, so make sure it's not dragging across your drawing. For the third circle, we're going to create eight sections using the same methods. Then using another color, I divide them up further in half.
Now draw half leaves from the bottom of your third circle to the top of your third circle. You'll see I'm finishing them off right away, but you can do just half and keep turning if you'd like. And go back to complete the second half, whatever works for you. You can then color them using different colors if you'd like. Again, be careful your hand doesn't drag across and smudge your mandala. You can color in the rest of the third circle now. I'm using gold again. I love how the pens go on very wet as if you are painting it. Guess what we're doing? We're going to divide each section even further.
You can probably guess what's happening next. Yes, we're dividing them again. When you're doing this alone without following the tutorial, this is where the magic happens. Simple repetitive motions can allow you to feel as if you are in a meditative state. For me, drawing the lines isn't a lot to think about, but it is enough motion to not allow my mind to wander, which is the perfect meditation practice for me. I find drawing very calming, and I also don't have to worry about that monkey mind people often get frustrated about when trying out different meditation practices. I often will not have any music playing while I make mandalas, but you may choose to have some soft music in the background. Now I'm just drawing in diagonal lines to look like leaf veins in every second section. You'll notice my page has turned a bit and it looks as though I'm not working from top to bottom, but I am still drawing the lines from top to bottom or from north to south. Now I'm going to draw the opposite lines in a different color to make it look like leaves. Because the mandala is now getting so big, there's the possibility, again, that my hand might drag through it. So I am now going to sometimes switch and draw from the bottom or the right hand side of the mandala. But again, I'm still pulling all lines towards the center of my body. I'll finish off this fourth circle with drawing over the pencil lines with my gel pen. Using a different color for the fifth and last circle, let's divide it into the same sections as we did in the fourth circle. Take notice of how I am doing the half leaves in this section. It's a little bit different than before, but it's basically finishing off the leaves that we created in the fourth circle, if that makes sense. I am now drawing five little lines in between each section, going about halfway up within the fifth circle. Again, don't worry about being perfect.
You'll see I'm drawing a little circle in the middle of each of these five lines. Make sure that you're not smudging your pen ink as you draw. I am now also adding another circle to the top of the fifth circle lines. Now is a great time to start adding some more details and filling things in. I'm filling in the top of my leaves with gold pen, but feel free to use any color you'd like. I like the gold so much, I'm going to fill in these little tiny circles with a dot of gold. I'm also going to put some gold lines within some of the leaves. I think I'll just let you watch some of the final details and not give instruction, as I think you can see what I'm doing to finish it off. Just know that you can start adding as much or as little detail as you'd like. You'll notice that I use black at the end. I often do that. I use black and white and gold or silver quite often and I really think that adds an extra beauty to my mandalas.
I hope you've enjoyed this video, and please do let me know in the comments if you do. I'd love to see your mandalas as well, so if you can, please do include them in the comments. Again, please do click on like and subscribe. It'll really help me get the word out with this new channel of mine. See you next week. Yours truly in all things mystical and magical. Laura. <laughs>